Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about working with storage in Linux. This is something that people switching from Windows have to adjust to and is something I'm frequently asked about. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, as this video is for people switching from Windows to Linux, I thought we'd start in the Microsoft offering. And because many people switching to Linux are likely to be running Windows 10, that's the version we're running here. Anyway, here in Windows, if we click on this PC, by default we open up a file manager with a list of standard user folders, as well as direct access to C colon, here labelled as a local disk. And if we plug in an external SSD, it's accessible as D colon. And if we then plug in a USB thumb drive, it's accessible as E colon. Meanwhile, if we go across to Linux, and here we're running Ubuntu 2404, things are somewhat different. Specifically, by default here, on the desktop we have a folder called Home, and if we open it up, we get a file manager that displays the contents of the Home folder for the current user. But, to many people's dismay, there are no drive letters. This said, if we plug in our external SSD, and then our USB thumb drive, they both appear in the file manager just fine, and we can access them like that. And as you may have noticed, here in Ubuntu, they also appear on the dock. And it's worth noting that these drives were both set up and formatted in Windows, and we can access them just fine here in Linux. It's also worth noting that to safely eject the drives, we can either go across to the dock and right click and select eject from the menu, or we can use the eject icon in the file manager. Given that not all Linux distros are the same, let's now also go across to Linux Mint. And here by default things are very similar. We again have a home folder on the desktop that opens up a file manager that shows the contents of the current user folder. Although here we can actually see the username, which is EC. And if we plug in the same drives, they again appear in the same way in the file manager, no problems at all, and here they also get an icon on the desktop. And to be honest, if you simply want to access drives and work with them in Linux, then this is all you really need to know. If I, for example, open up LibreOffice Writer and create a document, I could save it by going to File and to Save, and either picking one of the standard user folders, probably Documents, I could save it in Download if I wanted to, or I could save it to one of our external drives over there. Let's save our file to our integral SSD. However, if we just close this down, you may notice that also by default on the desktop here in Linux Mint is an icon called Computer. And if we open this up, we get a list of all the physical storage hardware connected to the computer along with the file system. And for those who really want to understand how drives and partitions work in Linux, this may be where things start to get confusing. So let's now delve into the fundamentals. Before SSDs, hard disks, or flash drives can be used to store data, the space on them needs to be allocated to one or more partitions. And these partitions then need to be formatted with a file system. So, for example, Windows partitions are usually formatted with a file system called NTFS, whilst in Linux, partitions are often formatted with a file system called ext4. In order for a partition to be accessed by a user, it must be mounted by the operating system. When Windows does this, it allocates a partition letter, as we've noted. But in Linux, all partitions are mounted as folders. Specifically, the system partition on which Linux is installed is mounted as a folder called root. This is designated by a forward slash and sits at the top of the file system's folder structure. All other partitions are mounted as a folder within root, 
although where they are by default located depends on the Linux distro. Partitions are mounted with the name used when they were last formatted. So, for example, our external SSD here appears as integral 1, as this was the name used when its single partition was formatted. And, as we can see, when we hover over it, we can see what is known as its mount point, which is media EC integral 1. And we can also see the block device for its single partition, which is SDB1. I'll explain block devices in the next segment of the video, so for now, let's stick with mount points. To show mount points more easily, we can press Ctrl L to toggle the location entry at the top of the file manager. And as we can see, if we repeatedly press it, we toggle back and forth between a graphical representation and an address bar with an exact location. And I've always found it amusing how this reveals that the home folder for a user is not actually called home, but is in fact a folder within home with the name of the current user, which here is EC. If we click on File System, as we did earlier, and again press Ctrl L, we now see just a forward slash in the address bar indicating that we're in the root folder. Or, in other words, we're now viewing the full contents of a Linux system partition, equivalent to the C partition in Windows. And we can navigate back to Home by clicking on Home, and then our username, with all of our standard user folders now springing into view. If we select our external SSD and again press Ctrl L, we again reveal that its mount point is Media EC Integral 1. Many Linux distros mount external drives in a folder called Media, with other common locations for mounted Linux partitions being Dev and MMT. If we navigate up one folder level, and again I'll press Ctrl L, we end up in Media EC, where all of the partitions for external drives mounted in Media for User EC are located. These also include our USB drive, which is called Stanley. If we just select that and again press Ctrl L, we can confirm that its mount point is Media EC Stanley. As we've just seen, in desktop applications, Linux presents mounted partitions using their folder name. However, for its own internal purposes, it identifies each physical storage device and each of its partitions as a block device with its own very specific label. Block device is a generic term for anything that stores data in blocks, with examples being an SSD, hard drive, flash memory card, or partition thereof. In Linux, each block device is represented by a file, all of which is stored in a folder called dev. Block devices connected via SATA, USB, or SCSI begin with the letters SD, which for historical reasons stands for SCSI Mass Storage Driver. A letter is added to identify different SD devices, with the first being SDA, the second SDB, and so on. Memory cards and eMMC flash storage have a name that begins with MMC BLK, which stands for Multimedia Card Block Device, which is then followed by a number. So, the first SD card inserted into a system that has no similar flash storage will be MMC BLK0. Devices connected via a PCIe NVMe interface are labelled NVMe, followed by a controller number, and then a letter N and a drive number. Hence, the first NVMe device is NVMe 0N1. And optical drives are named SR, standing for SCSI ROM, followed by a number. So, this means that the first CD, DVD, or Blu-ray drive will be SR0. The partitions on all block devices are also identified with a number. So, for example, the first partition on SDA is named SDA1 and the second SDA2. For NVMe SSDs and other flash storage, a P is also added, so that, for example, the first partition on NVMe 0N1 is NVMe 0N1P1 whilst the first partition on MMC BLK0 will be MMC BLK0 P1. 
as optical drives are not normally partitioned, there is no additional numbering applied. Putting all of this together, if we hover over our mounted partitions, we can see as earlier that our external SSD has the block device name SDB1, with the file representing this being stored in the depth folder. And the reason that the block device name is SDB1 here is because our external SSD is the second device connected to this computer by SATA or USB. And if you're wondering, the first one, or SDA, is a SATA SSD on which our Linux root partition is located. Although if we hover over the file system entry which represents this, Linux Mint does not choose to indicate its block device. But we can see the block device name for our USB thumb drive. And can you guess what it is? Well, it's the first partition on the third SATA or USB connected device. And so, yes, it's SDC1. On this computer, we also have a DVD drive. And so, if I put a disk into that, There we go, it has mounted, we can see the contents of our CD, and we can also see that its block device name is SR0, with its mount point being media EC, and a number which is the name of this particular disk. To manage drives in Windows, we right-click this PC, and go to Manage and Disk Management. To do the same thing in Linux, many distros have a utility called Disks. This is available here in Linux Mint, so let's run it up. There it is, and as usual, I'll do a bit of resizing because I've got a large scale factor in use for this video. And as we can see, on the left we have a list of drives, and for some reason this version of Disks does not allow me to expand that, so I can't pull that out. But we can see at the top what we've got, and the first drive here is SDA. This is the first drive attached by SATA. It's got two partitions on it. One is here. This is a SDA1. This is an EFI boot partition mounted at boot EFI. But this partition here is SDA2. And this is our root partition. So it's mounted at file system root. We then have our optical drive. I've taken the disk out of this so it's not making too much noise. That is a SR0. And then we've got our integral SSD, which for some reason has got a very small amount of free space on it, but over here it's got its single partition as SDB1. And then finally we've got our flash drive, this is SDC, with its single partition SDC1. And if we want to, here in this utility, we can work with partitions. There's a little gear menu here which we can bring up under access various options, and we can also here if we need to unmount a partition, which will change the options available very slightly, we can remount a partition. It's very exciting indeed. Although if you don't know exactly what you're doing, be very careful indeed working here in disks. Use it initially at least for just getting an overview of the storage on your Linux system. So far in this video, I've avoided using the terminal. And this is because it's perfectly possible to use Linux, including working with drives, without bringing it up. However, if you want to use the terminal, it can be a very useful storage management tool. So let's briefly run it up. Here it is. And let's run a command I commonly use in my SBC videos, which is lsblk. And this stands for list block devices. Here we go. And hopefully what we see here now makes a lot of sense. We have at the top SDA, the first SCSI SATA or USB connected drive on the system. And this has got two partitions, SDA1, which is a boot partition mounted at boot EFI, as we just looked at in the last part of the video, and a large partition SDA2, which is the system's root partition mounted at forward slash, in other words, mounted at root. We also have our external SSD, SDB, with its one partition, SDB1, and the mount point we've been discussing several times in this video. And then below that, our USB drive, SDC, with its partition, SDC1, and its mount point. And then finally, we've got our optical drive, currently without a media in it, 
but the device still shows as SR0. Just to show you some different kinds of block devices, let's go across to this computer, also running Linux Mint, but with a very different drive configuration. And if we execute an lsblk here, we therefore see this, with Linux here installed on an NVMe SSD with two partitions, NVMe 0 and one P1 and NVMe 0 and one P2, the second of which is our root partition, and the first, as on the last system, is a small EFI boot partition. And then also on this system, we've got plugged in a micro SD card with one partition, which is mounted in media EC with the name Mr. Scissors. And if you want to know more about working with storage in a terminal, just check out my video, the Lux Terminal Introduction. In this video, I've hopefully provided some useful information on drives and partitions for those switching to Linux. However, to keep things as straightforward as possible, I've avoided detailing the difference between a disk, a device, a drive, and a volume. But fear not, I'm planning a future Explaining Computers video on this topic, which is relevant to users of all operating systems. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh, <laughs>